in this set of slides on writing for print journalism, we're going to look at um, different kinds of stories other than straight news stories that um, straight news stories use the inverted pyramid, but some of these other story formats can vary a little bit uh, and might be of interest, especially as we move on in the course. So I want to go over the characteristics of feature stories long form journalism and literary journalism. Um, and we're going to today we're going to talk about how print traditionally approached these. And then as we get into the different formats, we're going to look at how they can be done online and how broadcast versions preserve some elements, but also differ because the mediums are different. So let's talk today about the kind of baseline, what we're talking about and what historically people are talking about. So features, we'll talk about those first. So you can get a bit more descriptive in features. Again, they tend to be longer than a traditional news story. So because of that, we can add in more description. We can talk a little bit more about the people, the place, and the actions that are happening. We'll rely a lot on our nouns and verbs, just like we did in our news stories. But we can incorporate a little bit more of the five senses. So how did things look, colors, we can bring in a little bit more style. Again, we're going to rely a lot on quotations and dialogue. So we can make sure that if you are including quotations and they're direct quotations, you do not ever change the words that someone said. But again, you can also use indirect quotations and paraphrase from people. Dialogue is really interesting and a great way to kind of bring a uh, dynamic aspect into the story. And again, if you've got more space, you can have a back and forth between two people. You can also set it up so that two people who didn't actually speak to each other, if their quotes relate to each other and speak to each other, you can present them one after another so that that way the reader can understand maybe the dialogue between two sides to the story if it's not literally a dialogue between two people. And also because the feature is a little bit more long form um, and a little bit of a different type of story. And again, the readers understand from the format, from the length, from how it's presented, what kind of story it is. So we kind of amend our expectations. The writer can put themselves into the story a little bit. Um, you can kind of um, describe how things seem to you on the day of, in this case, this was um, from a climate uh, change protest that happened, um, an extinction event. Um, protesters taking over part of um, a busy um, city square. So you can talk about the feeling of being in that place is their tension. And so we understand that there's a little bit more subjectivity because of the fact that we're bringing in those senses. Um, again, we're going to add more in the quotes and dialogues in the news story. And again, remember that the story must never become about yourself. It must always be about the subject being covered. And again, you're always going to strive to cover both sides of the story. But by bringing in your senses, you can bring yourself into the story a little bit more. You're still going to start off with your kind of same structure. You're going to have your lead at the beginning. And I'm going to cover these each in a second. But from the lead, you're going to lead off into an engine paragraph. And I'll tell you what that is. And then you've got your body. And you are going to have an ending in this kind of a story. So your lead is similar to the news story, but it can use more creative lead formats. Uh, if you might remember this from your journalism class, or if you want, you can go and look at chapter five in your book and the video and slides I put up on that. There are other ways to approach a lead rather than just summarizing the main point of the story. You might start off with a quote or an anecdote, something to hook the readers in. So you can be a little bit more creative because of the fact that you've got more space and the reader understands that this isn't a new story where necessarily they're going to get the heart of the matter right, right away. But you do want to get there pretty quickly. So after your lead, you're going to have this paragraph that hooks the readers in and explains why they want to read about the story. Why do you want to keep reading on? Again, if the reader knows they may not get to the heart of it right away, they need to be enticed to spend their time and energy. As you said, a lot, as I said earlier, a lot of our writing is about making sure that we respect the time of the reader. So now that you've got them interested, you can get into the body and the substance of the story. 
Now, because this is a feature and not a news story, you do want to close and you do want to put in an ending. You might want to wrap up any questions that might be lingering that weren't touched upon elsewhere in the story. And you also want to make sure there's some perspective. Again, you've taken the reader on a bit of a longer journey. So you want to make sure they understand why and you get to the end and they're very clear on what the takeaway should be. If there's any final points or conclusions you want to make, that's the place to make it. Now, this brings me to uh, leads and kickers. So in a kind of a feature story, again, we're going to be talking about, you know, you're telling people about events that happen, things that are going on. But again, you're going to have that wrap up. Now, I love this. Uh, again, this is from Everybody Writes. And it's a quote from uh, someone that she respects. And this quote, he said, a good lead invites you to the party and a good kicker makes you wish you could stay longer. So she reminds us to give special love and attention to the first and last sentences of your piece, or in traditional journalism terms, the lead in the closing sentence, the kicker. You're going to be setting a tone for your writing, and you want the reader to be hooked and to be drawn in. So especially if you're not writing a traditional straight news story, you're writing something that's going to take a little bit more time, have the readers go on a little bit longer of a journey with you, you want to entice them. And then in the end, you want to wrap it up, but make them, again, have that sense of, all right, this is why, you know, you have that satisfaction of this is why I was here. And you kind of wish that you had a chance to stay a little bit longer. Now, again, if we're doing something that's serialized, that kicker might actually be set up in a way to entice them to want to come back to the next uh, episode in the series. So if you look at your reading in Blackboard, uh, there are more details on each of these tips and specific quotes for putting the reader into the story, describing a problem your reader can relate to, and there are examples that she pulls from actual leads that have been published. You can set the stage, again, remembering that in a feature story or in the longer form journalism or literary journalism, you're able to bring in some more of those senses. And so you can set the stage a little bit more for the reader and make them feel like they're really there. Ask a question is an option. Use it sparingly and use it with caution. It can get really overworked. You could quote a crazy or controversial bit of data, especially if you couch it and say like this is something that's widely accepted or something that's widely circulated. And then maybe you're going to go on to expand upon that or refute it. And again, because this is, we're looking at something where we have a little bit more time, you could start off with a story or a personal anecdote that invites the reader in. Um, she notes that the New Yorker does this a lot. And there are many other ideas, and she notes a few other ones. But, you know, keep yourself open. Anything that's going to hook the reader and make them interested in reading more, especially if you're looking at some of these longer form ideas. Um, and as she said, I put closing our kickers as the close second in importance to the lead. Finishing strong with the call to action if appropriate, but you certainly want to have a sense of completion. You want to make sure that the reader feels like everything has been wrapped up for them. You don't want them questioning what they were supposed to take away. And you don't definitely do not want to feel like you just trailed off because you ran out of steam. Even if you're writing an inverted pyramid, you don't really want to just be like, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, you want to make sure that it's clear to the reader that you've gotten to the end. Now, again, if you're writing a longer piece, especially if it's something where it isn't in the inverted pyramid, so the reader has a different understanding of what they're going to read, you want to make sure that you do close up. And so the um, kind of go to is to recast the biggest takeaway of the piece. That's like your conclusion if you were writing an English paper. Another thing you can do, and again, this sometimes allows the reader to maybe be enticed into reading the next in your series, um, is to add a little tonal surprise. Maybe you have a quote that is a little bit more conversational, or you have a quote that's funny, something where, or a funny piece of data, again, something that makes the reader kind of sit up and take notice. Or you could this is my um, suggestion to you if you're writing your inverted pyramid story and you really cannot leave it without a conclusion, let others have the last word. You can end on a quote from somebody else. And again, especially if it does remind readers why they were reading the piece in the first place, can be really helpful to have that kind of sense of completion and closure for the reader. Now, how does a feature differ from, say, long-form journalism? Long-form journalism is going to be a little bit less descriptive and creative um, 
In both cases, you are following journalistic standards, um, but they kind of approach them in different ways. Long form journalism follows a little bit more closely to the inverted pyramid format. And so it is going to be more objective in nature in terms of the tone where again, you can say that you can bring yourself a little bit more into a feature story or into literary journalism. So in terms of the format, your first few paragraphs are, again, you're going to like your lead, you want to get the reader interested, and you're going to raise questions that the story is going to answer later on. Again, why are you going to keep reading? You want to make sure that the reader understands why it is that they're going to stick around for the long haul. Your nut graph, um, it gets to, well, the nut of the story, the meat of the story, what it is that you're going to be talking about. Um, and it's kind of like an extended lead. And you just delay it a little bit with long form journalism because you do have a little bit more of that room. So you indicate where the story is going to go. So if you've raised questions, you kind of lead a little bit towards where your answer is going to go. You talk about why this is written. Again, if you're spending a lot of your time and energy on a piece, something that is longer, it cannot be contained very shortly, you want to understand why it is that you're doing this. And so it's going to invite the reader into your story and have them kind of keep going. And again, it's almost like your lead or your summary. You just kind of have delayed it slightly. Now, literary journalism uses fictional techniques to tell a true story. So in all of these cases, we're talking about things that are actually true. We're not talking about fiction. But in literary journalism, kind of like in your feature story, you might bring a little bit more of those other senses in. You might detail scenes. Now, you're also going to maybe think about people as characters in the story. You're going to think about how you want to pace your story instead of necessarily making sure that you've got that intro that's really strong up the front that summarizes things. You've got that nut graph that kind of tells the reader what's going on. You may, in fact, structure your plot so that you do withhold things so that you've got an element of surprise. If you read about storytelling or take a class in storytelling, we'll talk about the parts of a narrative arc where you have, you know, some setting the scene and then the action rises you come to a climax then there's a resolution and the wrapping up of everything so again you might use that structure and that's a different structure than you traditionally use in journalism again in journalism in all of these we're putting that climax almost at the front we're almost front loading our stories in any of the other formats that we've been talking about so in literary journalism you can kind of withhold things a little bit you can also use creative techniques like using metaphors and similes as a way of getting to those kind of senses and engaging the emotional side of things. In your other kinds of journalism, you don't necessarily want to be evoking emotions. And again, the writer can enter the story. Sorry, I clicked too early. So again, this writer can enter the story in a way that um, you might not in, say, your long form journalism and your traditional journalism. So you can do so sometimes features in literary journalism go together. Um, sometimes people will conflate the two. You don't necessarily have to use um, literary techniques in um, the longer form of a feature. And similarly, um, not all literary pieces are long form. So features we're thinking about as longer pieces that are a little bit more devoted to your senses. Then we've got long form journalism, which is basically like a news story, but longer, oftentimes serialized. Um, and literary journalism is structured more like a traditional story would be told and uses techniques like simile, like metaphor. Um, you can use things um, like onomatopoeias. You can use things um, like alliteration that you really don't want to use and draw attention to the writing style if you were using it in the other ones. Um, so that's kind of the basic differences between these longer form pieces.